In the previous lecture, we discussed the concept of dominant pole. Now in this presentation, we are going to solve one problem based on concept of dominant pole. So let's get started. The transfer function of a plant is T s equal to 5 over s plus 5 multiplied with s square plus s plus 1. The second order approximation of T s using dominant pole concept is. It is a multiple choice question and was asked in gate 2007. We can see the transfer function given in this question is a third order transfer function because the highest power of s in the denominator will be equal to 3. So it will have 3 poles. We have to find out the roots of this equation to find out the two poles and one pole will be present at s equal to minus 5. And we are asked the second order approximation of Ts using the dominant pole concept. Now I want you all to pause this video and try this question on your own. I hope you are done. So let me know in the comment sections that how many of you got C as the answer. So moving on to the solution, we are having the transfer function T s equal to 5 over s plus 5 multiplied with s square plus s plus 1. This is a third order system because it is having three poles and we can see the highest power of s will be 3. One pole is clearly visible at s equal to minus 5 and to find out the other two poles, we need to find out the roots of this quadratic equation. So we will first find out the roots of this equation by using the quadratic formula. We can see all the coefficients of these terms is equal to 1. So if we substitute all the coefficients which is equal to 1 in the quadratic formula, we will have minus 1 plus minus root of 1 square minus 4 AC that is 4 multiplied with 1 multiplied with 1 over 2. And if we solve this, we will get the values of S equal to minus 0 0.5 plus minus j 0.86. So we will have a pair of complex conjugate poles in the left half plane. So now we have calculated all the three poles of this transfer function and we know this transfer function is having one pair of complex conjugate poles present at s equal to minus 0.5 plus minus j 0.86 and the other pole is present at s equal to minus 5. Now let us plot these poles in the pole 0 diagram. This is the pole 0 diagram we are having. In this, we are having one pair of complex conjugate poles present at s equal to minus 0.5 plus minus j 0.86. So it will be minus 0.5. The real part will be minus 0.5 plus j 0.86 minus j 0.86. So this is the pair of complex conjugate poles and the other pole is present at s equal to minus 5. Now if we take the ratio of positions of this pole to that of these poles, we will have minus 5 over minus 0.5 which is equal to 10 and it is definitely greater than 4. So we can say this pole is the dominant pole and this pole is the insignificant pole. Now we know that we can approximate this third order transfer function to a second order transfer function by eliminating this insignificant pole which is present at s equal to minus 5. So now we will perform the second order approximation of the transfer function T s equal to 5 over s plus 5 multiplied with s square plus s plus 1. This is a third order transfer function and after eliminating this insignificant pole, this will be a second order transfer function and that is why we call this as the second order approximation. From the previous lecture, we all know we need to verify two conditions in order to approximate a transfer function. The condition number one is the ratio of insignificant pole to that of significant pole should be greater than or equal to 4. In this case, it is equal to 10. So definitely it is greater than 4. And condition number two is the DC gain before approximation and the DC gain after the approximation should be the same. So for that sake, we need to find out the DC gain of this transfer function. It is a type 0 system because we are not having any pole at s equal to 0. So we can find out the DC gain k equal to limit s tending to 0, 5 over s plus 5 multiplied with s square plus s plus 1. If we put limit s tends to 0, we will have the DC gain k equal to 5 over 5 which is equal to 1. So we can say the DC gain of this transfer function is equal to 1. Now according to condition number 2, the DC gain before approximation should be equal to the DC gain after approximation and in this case the DC gain is equal to 1. 
So after the approximation, when we will eliminate this insignificant pole, we will have the transfer function Ts equal to 1 over s square plus s plus 1. We can see the dc gain of this transfer function is also equal to 1. And that's why the numerator is changed to 1. So it is very important to maintain the dc gain of the system when we are doing the approximation. And in this way, we will get Ts equal to 1 over s square plus s plus 1 as the answer, which is option D. And now we are done with this lecture. I'll end this lecture here. See you in the next one.